Interesting. Welcome, everyone. Just admitting the flood of people coming in at the moment. Um, so as we give it just another couple of minutes while people get their tech set up and, and open up the meeting, um, if you want to introduce yourself in the chat, it would be great to see who's all here. So um, I'm sure everyone's a Zoom expert by now, but just in case you're not, if you go down to the bottom of your Zoom window, there's a, a chat function with a little bubble. So click on that. Um, it would be great to know your name, perhaps where you're located, at the moment um, and if you feel comfortable if you work at an agency or a company or freelancing um, let us know uh, kind of what what you're up to at the moment um, and how you're using your your creative powers um, to get started great hi Lucy hi Michael hi Sophia awesome so welcome everyone to uh, this event, uh, Creativity Isn't Neutral um, event. Um, for anyone who doesn't know me, um, I'm assuming I've been in on email with you guys over um, perhaps Futera's social media, um, but I'll quickly introduce myself. My name is Hannah Pang. I'm head of marketing and advocacy at um, Futera. I'm currently in Vancouver, Canada, but I'm usually based in our uh, London office in the UK. Um, so just starting off by saying thank you for joining us today, for being part of this community and this movement um, to help shift uh, the creative industries to serving the solution rather than rather than the problems. Um, so to get started, just to introduce the other folks who are on screen with me, we have Duncan from the Clean Creatives campaign. So they're our co-host for today's um, event. We have uh, Solitaire Townsend, who's the co-founder of Futera. Um, and we have Bill McKibben, who is an author, educator, environmentalist, and founder of 350.org. Um, so just to give an intro to what we will be talking about today and what you can expect, um, I will start off with a little bit of context of why we're hosting this event, why Futera and Clean Creatives have come together for this event. Um, and then I'm so excited to hear from, from Solitaire and, and Bill McKibben. Um, so I'm so honored to be able to work with Solly every day. She is a constant source of inspiration and really was a huge spark for, for Futera um, spending so much of our time and energy kind of focused on on this work um, and I'm trying so hard not to fangirl over Bill McKibben right now because Bill I, I studied you in my environmental studies classes um, in university so I'm, I'm also so excited to, to hear from from you as well um, so from from there we'll, we'll hear from our featured speakers um, Duncan is then going to lead us in some interactive exercises which will run through Google Slides um, and for any interesting Introverts out there, don't worry when I say interactive exercises, you don't have to say anything. Um, there's so many of us, uh, which is so exciting. So we're doing it all through through Google Slides. So we'll share a link to that when it's time for that bit. Um, of course, we have the chat function as well. So feel free to have kind of an, an ongoing conversation in that um, area as well. Um, okay, so but just before I dive into all of that, just want to do some some housekeeping. Um, so of course, I want to start by saying this event is focused on, on climate and how we can serve a lot of those solutions. But of course, climate intersects with so many other issues that that needs to be tackled. So I'm really excited to see how this movement grows and evolves uh, as well. Um, on a more technical level, everyone is on mute at the moment just because there are so many of us. Um, and I, I'm sure like me, you guys can all get so riled up and excited about this. And I, I'm just want to make sure that we kind of uh, stick, stick to the plan. Um, so everyone's on mute. We'll be using Google Slides and the chat um, if you do want to contribute. Um, but if there is something that you really want to, to say, feel free to shoot me a message and, and we'll try to create um, some time and space for you to be able to, to share um, anything that, that you're thinking. Um, I also just want to flag that this conversation is being recorded just so we can share it with anyone in this community who couldn't make it live today. So hopefully that is okay with everyone. Everyone. Okay, so to kick us off a bit of our story, so you know the Futera context and, and why we're doing this. Um, and for anyone who doesn't know, Futera is a global change agency on a mission to make sustainability so desirable it becomes normal. Um, it's our 20 year anniversary today, or not today, this year, 2021. We were started in 2001. Um, Solly, I'm sure we'll have to do another event where we kind of 
go through the ins and outs of the, the origins of Futera. Um, but it was in 2015 that we did our first disclosure report, our client disclosure report. Um, and as an agency who's really been driven uh, and is a purpose-based uh, agency, we're in the business of creating positive change. We really believe that one of the first steps in being a uh, a purpose-based agency is transparency because it we feel it helps make us accountable. Um, so in 2015 was our first disclosure report where we um, disclosed the percentage of revenue by by industry. Um, so so we're uh, saying okay, who's paying our bills? Uh, opening it up a little bit so that everyone can know kind of where are where we're we're lending our um, creative energy and talents. So fast forward a couple years to May 2019, it was at the height of the Extinction Rebellion movement, especially in the UK, but XR wrote a letter to the advertising industry calling out our role in creating climate change. Um, and we knew as, as Futera um, that we needed to do something about this. It was kind of our sector that we wanted to help um, serve the solutions rather than the problem. But we also know that as comms people, we could say something really compelling um, and make this really beautiful message, but we really wanted to make it a lot more tangible. So we updated our client disclosure report and we actually asked a lot of other agencies to do the same. We wanted to say this isn't um, just something that we should be doing. It should become industry standard. We think uh, being transparent about who's paying our bills is a really great uh, first step um, to create more accountability in the industry. So so um, we've had over 300 agencies sign up to say, yes, uh, we won't work on any fossil fuel briefs. And we've already had over 30 agencies do their own disclosure reports. And I think in the future, we would love to make this standard reporting for the creative industry. And we'll talk a little bit more about that today as well. Um, and so in 2020 is when we got introduced to the team at Clean Creatives. Um, and we really know that in order to build a movement to drive change across the industry, we, we need to do it together. Um, so that's why we've, we've come together for this event as well as to help foster the larger movement. And I'm so excited to have this event with all of you as well because we all need to be in it together. So um, Duncan, I'll, I'll turn it over to you if you just wanna give a quick introduction uh, to yourself and to Clean Creatives. Um, hi, everyone. Such a pleasure to be able to talk with all of you and have this conversation. Um, I'll be quick. Um, my, my background is as um, a digital campaigns manager for environmental and progressive organizations. And really, the origin for Clean Creatives was kind of the insight that, um, well, two insights. One was that every time we tried to do something like, you know, get fossil fuel, get uh, companies to, or uh, colleges to divest from fossil fuels or to stop a big pipeline or to stop fracking or something like that. There'd always be these extremely well-run and well-funded um, advertising campaigns that would pop up to make our lives a lot harder. Um, and then if we figured if there was a way to sort of manage that, um, we would actually be a lot more successful in our work. Um, and the other was just the realization that um, you know people within the industry probably are more in line with our values than with Exxon's. Um, and uh, just realizing that there's a great opportunity um, to leverage the power and relationships and creativity um, that, you know, people within the advertising and PR industry have to do a lot of good. Um, so I think there's a, just a lot of great stuff that we could be doing together. Um, and I'm so, so grateful to Sully and to Hannah um, for really uh, bringing together this conversation and for being such amazing thought leaders and partners in this. So um, that's what I got and I'm looking forward to um, the conversation. Perfect, thanks, Duncan. Um, so just thank you again, everyone for, for being here, for being part of this community and driving this movement forward for anyone who um, is just coming in now, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat with your name, where you're based and um, perhaps what, you, what you're working on or, or where you work at the moment. Um, and without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to Solly. Thank you so much, Hannah, and thank you, Duncan. Um, so Solitaire, it's a wonderful name. You can all call me Solly because it's a ridiculous name. And it is such a privilege to see all these names and job titles and passions pop up um, in my chat function. So welcome, everybody. Um, the, by the way, this is very curated. The rest of my house doesn't look like this, but this is a creative and communications conversation. So I thought I should try to make it look good. As Hannah said, 20 years ago, I co-founded an agency dedicated to try to make sustainable development so desirable it became normal. Um, 20 years ago, that made me a freak. 
today. It makes me a freaking genius because the work that's available, the, the clients, the need has just grown over the, those 20 years. And I can see a lot of folks who are working for similar agencies are in there. And over those 20 years, um, I've become very convinced that cli the climate emergency is also a creative one. It's a creative emergency as well as an emergency of the chemistry of our planet. And the reason why it's a creative emergency is because we have an enormous job to convince the seven and a half billion other human beings and particularly the billion over consumers um, on our planet um, to invest in the solutions. We've got to sell the solutions. We desperately need to sell the political, the technological and the personal actions. We've really got to make those more desirable than the problem. And I'm gonna talk more about that as this hour goes on. I'm gonna get in there about what the solutions might be. Um, and I'm a solutionist, that's where I come from. I'm all about the answers, but I'm also really deeply fucked off and apparently I'm allowed to swear because it's cute when British people do so. I'm really fucked off about the situation we have at the moment where we're in 2021, we're in this pivot moment around the world of this desperate need for creativity to serve the solutions, to serve the answers rather than serving destruction. And yet still the vast majority of the advertising industry, which means you, the vast majority of people who are paid to be creative are primarily being paid to serve destructive industries. The billions, I think it's 1.72 billion that is, that is paid by the oil and gas and coal industry massively dwarfs renewables just to talk about one solution. In fact, um, as well as Clean Creatives, one of the other amazing organizations that we've been working with as Futera is the Purpose Disruptors team. And Ben and Caroline um, from that team, from Purpose Disruptors, I really would check them out. They've just done a piece of work on what they're calling eco-effectiveness. Now, eco-effectiveness is looking into the actual numbers of the impact that the creative industry, particularly the advertising industry, is creating. So the Advertising Association in the UK, so specifically in the UK, the advertising industry has estimated that the greenhouse gas impact of the entire advertising industry in the UK, all the offices, all the coffee machines, all the laptops, all the flying, that the direct footprint of the advertising industry scopes one to three is about one million tonnes per year. That's pre-COVID. I'm not surprised by that. It's big, but it's not that big because we're talking about brains sitting in front of laptops. However, this is an industry that prizes itself on being able to influence behavior. In fact, there's a lot of awards in our industry for advertising's ability to sell product. So the Audi campaign, which was the IPA Effectiveness Grand Prix winner in 2018, was a campaign to sell more Audis. And they claimed that they generated 1.78 billion incremental revenue, that's two, two pound profit for every one pound generated through the campaign that they ran for Audi. So this is, this is, you know, this isn't about climate change. This is about, did that Audi campaign sell more cars? And the answer is yes, it did. And it did so that it won a Grand Prix winner. Now, if you take Take all of that numbers that they're claiming, that, at, that the advertising agency are claiming, all those numbers that they sold more cars for Audi, and do the carbon maths, it comes out that that single, single one ad campaign created 5.1 million tonnes of greenhouse gases. So the entirety of the ad industry in the UK's direct footprint, 1 million tonne. One campaign sold a lot of Audis, 5.1 million tons. That's what we're talking about here. That's the material impact of this industry. And when this industry says, no, we're about, we're about selling other things, it's like, no, the ad industry exists to sell more shit to more people. That's why it exists. That's why, that's where the money comes from. That's where the clients come from. And that's 
what we've got to shift. So for me, this debate today has two sides. On one side, it's the how can we divest creativity from destruction? How can we cut off the talent pipeline, you, the amazing communicators, the creatives, the ideators, the account folks, this whole industry, how can we divest this industry? And also, how can we reinvest that talent, that creativity into the solutions? Basically, can we as creatives pick a side serving the solutions, not serving destruction? Because bluntly, creativity has consequences and it ain't neutral. So thank you so much. Um, I'm going to hand over to Bill now, who I suspect will swear slightly less than I do. Friend, it's... Um... It's very good to see you. Ms. Townsend and I have known each other for a very, very long time. Um, and she has been hard at work on this problem from uh, almost the outset, which I, I should uh, kind of know because I wrote the first book about climate change 32 years ago now, back when I was 27 or 28. Um, and uh, I gotta say, first thing is that I'm a little, um, intimidated to be on a call with um, so many creatives. Um, I'm theoretically a writer, but I, I was thinking about this this morning. I mean, I, if you actually um, judged me by the number of days I managed to come up with something interesting, uh, I think you'd have to call me an uncreative or uh, at the very least a, a occasional uh, uh, creative. So to get to be with people who are pros at this, and can do it every day and on demand is, um, um, is, is wonderful. And I'm, I, I'm gonna say, just try to say a couple of things. The first is that um, the opportunity here for people to help is astonishing. You know, Campaigns, uh, to the, uh, climate change is the greatest crisis that human beings have ever wandered into. And we've got a very short time in order to solve it. The scientists tell us that if we haven't done our work by the end of the decade, uh, if we haven't halved emissions by then, if we haven't really broken the back of the current way of doing business, then we'll never meet the targets that we set in Paris just a couple of years ago. So that's that's a um, huge challenge in a short period of time, which is exactly the kind of challenges that y'all are used to working with. You have a time frame and, uh, and uh, something you got to get done. And in this case, what we have to get done at its very base is a conceptual shift. You know, I spent all my time working on different particular projects. We try to, you know, I, I've gone to jail trying to stop big pipelines or trying to get uh, universities to divest or trying to, you know, and all these things work. We're, we're, we're good at them. They, you know, we can make them happen with a great deal of effort. But, and while each of them is important in and of itself, we've been very clear, at least I have from the beginning, that none of them are anywhere close to sufficient to getting done what needs to be done. Therefore, along with being important in and of themselves, they also have to contribute to the larger goal, which is, I think, to change the zeitgeist, um, to change people's sense of what is normal and natural and obvious. And when you win the battle for the zeitgeist, then you win the battle, because after that, all the legislative changes, all the all those things come much, much, much more easily. So to give a kind of example uh, from the last few years in my country, you know, it was only 10 or 12 years ago that people like Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton were still against gay marriage in the US because it didn't poll well, you know? But people did an extraordinary job of mounting an endless series of campaigns around lawsuits, around you know, elections, around all sorts of things. That, and, and what they all were adding up to was changing the zeitgeist to the point where suddenly, as if the scales had fallen from people's eyes, they were like, 
yeah, why wouldn't you uh, marry the person that you loved? What could be, you know, what could be more obvious than that? And once that happened, then the, you know, then it was as if we lived in a different world. And now even morons like Trump don't bother trying to make an issue out of this because they can't. The zeitgeist has shifted and shifted decisively. And that's what has to happen on this issue. So you guys are zeitgeist engineers. You have a better sense than anyone about how to do this. And so the, the opportunities here are enormous. And we can put all of you to work doing amazing things, um, especially when you're able to do them in conjunction with people who are already mounting important campaigns for climate justice. You know, there are an extraordinary number of people, frontline groups, indigenous communities, uh, uh, people all every corner of the world who are doing extraordinary work and need help, need people who are able to memify things, people who are able to create great images, people who can uh, come up with uh, the snappy catchphrases that help, people who can do all those important things. And, and, and so, you know, I mean, look, um, very few people get the chance to say at any given moment that they're doing the most important thing they could be doing in the world. Um, tiny percentage of the human population ever gets that particular honor or privilege and, and burden, frankly, um, you know, because it's emotionally difficult sometimes to take up questions of this magnitude with this much ri existential risk to civilizations. Um, but y'all, have the potential to be in that very small group that gets to say, I'm literally doing the most important thing I could be doing in the world. So we can put you to work and we will, and we're extraordinarily grateful. That's half the message. The other half is just perhaps you'd be good enough to pass along to your colleagues from school or from wherever who are off doing the work that they shouldn't be doing. Who are off collaborating with the forces in this society that are trying to keep the old zeitgeist along, uh, alive for a few more decades. The ones who are still trying to convince people that what they need is an enormous semi-military vehicle to drive around in, or that, you, you know, all the other things that, that come with, when I wrote the piece for the New Yorker about this a few weeks ago, a few months ago, I seized on just one small campaign that some clearly very creative people at one of the big agencies had done for Exxon. And they clearly had a lot of fun uh, taking, um, you know, building little tiny models of uh, 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 um, the machinery that's necessary to convert algae into biofuel. And they made this great little series of, and it was easy to see how much fun it must have been to do it and what creativity it required. And the only problem with it was that it was a lie, uh, that it was an effort to help uh, the worst company on earth greenwash its record so that it could maintain its current business model, digging stuff up and burning it for a few more decades, decades that we don't have. So pass on to them the message that that we know what they're up to and we're coming for them. Um, you know, I'm, uh, as I say, I'm not the most creative guy in the world. And sometimes I repeat uh, myself uh, and my actions. And the only advantage to that is you get good at it. And, you know, with, with colleagues like Duncan, we're good at going after people who do bad things. Um, and, and against great odds, we've been able to shut down giant pipelines and been able to, uh, you know, force huge endowments and companies and portfolios to divest their fossil fuel stock and done it in cheerful enough ways that by this point, you know, um, I mean, uh, this divestment campaign, which is the biggest anti-corporate campaign in history, uh, at this point, this year, we've managed to get both the Queen of England and the Pope to be 
divesting with us. So, you know, short of getting Beyonce, I don't know really who else we, we need, you know, in this fight we're winning. Well, we're going to go after those people who insist on trying to profit from destroying the planet. I was looking back at my calendar, and on this day a year ago, um, before the pandemic, uh, I spent the day uh, getting arrested uh, in the lobby of Chase Manhattan or Chase, JP Morgan Chase, the, the bank, its branch nearest the US Capitol. And there were a dozen of us who got arrested. Jane Fonda was on the other side of the glass on the street cheering us on. And the reason we did was because um, J.P. Morgan Chase is the biggest lender to the fossil fuel industry. So just as we need to cut the supply of creativity, we need to cut the supply of money that helps keep these, these guys alive. And I bring this up because though J.P. Morgan Chase is enormously rich and big and bigger than any ad agency in the world by several orders of magnitude, um, we were able to do some damage. Uh, and you know, two months ago, J.P. Morgan Chase announced that from here on in, their uh, loans were going to be uh, Paris compliant, a, a, a phrase I have a feeling was engineered by someone in a PR agency. And I have a feeling we'll take a few more people going to jail to fully flesh out. Uh, but it's a good sign that nobody is too big to get kicked in the nuts by, um, by and we're, this is, what we do because we take it extraordinarily seriously. Um, 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 it's not okay to wreck the world and it's not okay to try to profit off helping wreck the world. So I, I, I look forward enormously to this campaign, partly because I, at this point, I, I confess there's some bad part of me that likes making trouble for bad guys and partly because I'm extraordinarily excited at the privilege of getting to meet and work with all the creative minds that are willing to put, but you know, I mean, let's, let's be honest here. The, the mind is a really important part of this, of being a creator, but we need minds that are attached to good hearts. And I have a feeling that that's who the people on this call are. And I can just imagine the amount of energy that even a few hundred of those people um, um, liberated to do the kind of work that needs to be done can uh, get accomplished. So many thanks to the people who are doing this and uh, I will very much look forward to being a part of this in the year ahead. Amazing, thank you, Bill. Thank you, Sally. I think lots of quotable moments um already seeing a lot of people capture them um in in the chat yes definitely we need to clone bill <laughs> um but we have our, our whole community of us there's so many of us um and as bill said we need more so um keep doing what you're doing and and also let's let's help spread this message we need um to grow and and build the movement. Um, and I will admit I am an, uh, a, a former advertising executive. Um, so if anyone else is out there who um, is a recovering ad person, um, happy happy to have to have you here. Um, and now I think is the time when we do want to start the conversation and get everyone contributing and involved and and hear your your ideas. So hopefully those um, statements from from Solly and Bill provide some good. Uh, inspiration, got the wheels turning. Um, so let's figure out kind of what we can do next. So I'm going to hand it over to to Duncan um, to bring us through some uh, some interactive uh, exercises. All right. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. Um, I think I have that power. Um, and I'm also going to put a link in the chat. Actually, I can't do that anymore. Um, one moment. How do I unshare? I'll, I'll, I'll share the link. Okay, you got the link? Okay, great. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, so I'm sharing a Google Slides spreadsheet, and hopefully um, we will not overwhelm Google Slides, and it will let all of you come in. Um, and there's a series of questions um, that I'm just going to walk through, and I, and I really want to emphasize that these are like genuine questions. This is not like, these are not fait accomplice. Like, I actually really would like to hear from you about um, the answers to some of these, because um, I think they're really important um, to building the campaign that we're trying to build and, and making this work. Um, so 
The first thing I want to do um, is to get a taste of um, just like where you are at. Um, so if you go to slide number two, um, you'll see a red line um, and then a bunch of stars. Um, and so what I'd like you to do um, is sort of place yourself on this continuum. Um, and this is anonymous for a reason. That's just a star. It's not your name. Because <laughs> um, you can really fall anywhere you'd like along this. And I, I would like to sort of know like where you're at. Um, and on this continuum of people who are engaging with climate change right now, we have on the left, um, people in the US like here, um, Sunrise Movement, um, XR, Green New Deal supporters, people who are really vocally mobilizing um, themselves and their community around this issue um, to make really fundamental changes in our economy. Um, and then on the right, um, we have our friends at BP, Shell, Chevron, Aramco, um, sort of the fossil fuel majors that are, um, you know, some of them are genuinely making some changes, like they are trying to shift their approach. But just in terms of your personal values, where do you see yourself on this continuum? Um, so if you could just grab one star, um, I'm going to see if I can demonstrate that. Oops, I'm having some connection troubles with Google Slides. That's not a great sign. We're going to reload this again. Um, when you can access it, just grab one star and place it on the spectrum. Um, and then we're going to kind of get a picture of like where people on the call are vis-a-vis um, -vis this. And I can't see the chat right now, so I'm wondering if anyone else is having trouble accessing this. Yeah, it looks like a couple people are having trouble. There's too many of us. Okay, <laughs> okay unavailable due to heavy traffic. Um, let me think about ways to troubleshoot this. Um, that was not what I was hoping for. Uh, you can only be in the viewer mode. Um, Hannah, do you mind taking the reins for a minute while I think about how we might be able to um, uh, troubleshoot this? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sounds good. Yeah, it looks like um, everyone's in a viewer mode rather than edit. Okay, so we're all locked out together. Yeah. All right, I was able to just get back in there. Um, okay, but... well, let's, let's give it a couple minutes, see if we can uh, get it to, to start working. Okay, great. Yeah, mine's also reconnecting. I so cleverly set up this um, presentation for us. Well, I see some stars have moved. That's a good sign. Shall we um, perhaps try to do it and gauge it based on, on chat? So say a one is you're on yeah. the left side of things, like super hardcore XR and on the number, and then maybe two is kind of like in the middle, um, doing, doing what you can, but not kind of, yeah, going full out. Um, and then perhaps on, on the, the right side is, is number three. So I'm still feeling like you're kind of connected to, to the problem. Let's, let's do it one to five. And one so that you five. can have a, have a little more room in the, in there. So, um, yeah, one, one is you are over here with our friend Sunrise XR Green New Deal. And, um, five is you're with our friends over on the right. Can you create a poll? Lots of ones, twos, threes. Saw some 2.5s. I saw a minus 50. I like that one. <laughs> yeah, I saw some poll. 0 0.5s. Struggling to be at one, but at two. That's realistic. That's real. That's real. Okay. I feel that. Bill's been arrested so many times for standing what he believes in that I don't feel like I can really inhabit the one because I never have. So I maybe put myself as a two with like a one aspiration. And I know that for many people, direct action is, you know, is challenging and can even be dangerous. Getting arrested is one, one small tool in the toolkit. You don't want to use it too often. It gets literally and figuratively dull, just like all the other tools. So just one small part of things. So um, someone asked, like, does it mean what we're doing or what our perspective is? And I, I think that the thing is, is 
uh, is really about your values, like where your heart is at in this issue. Um, and that's, that's sort of like where you should rank yourself. So it, it feels like there's, a, there's some ones, there's some twos, there's some threes, uh, like 2.5, yeah. Um, so like more or less people are kind of in the center or towards the left of the spectrum. Um, but, you know, we're not all, all the way there all the time. So like, uh, you, I'm not saying, it's not the case that XR is the only way to like do excellent work or to get shit done. Um, so I just want to emphasize that, that like there, there are lots of places to be useful along the spectrum. Um, and, and that's, that is like a, a perfectly reasonable, um, place to be. Duncan, for the next one, I'm just, I'm going to try making a zoom, um, poll for it, uh, instead so we can Great. see where everyone's at, but just give me a moment. Great. I did not, I tried to figure out how I could do that, but I didn't see if I had that power. So <laughs> Okay. Sorry for the um, technical glitches, everyone. I guess there's so many of us trying to make change. I have to admit, well, every time you have a technical glitch, I'm reminded how enormously grateful that I am that we can gather like this during a time like this. I know there's people online who've said they're from all over the world. We've got folks here from Brazil. We've got folks here from India. And here we are having a conversation about how to change the creative industries to confront climate change all in our homes so um yeah it doesn't always work perfectly but boy i am pleased to be here with you irrespective okay almost there I'm particularly pleased to work with Hannah and her amazing typing fast skills and Zoom <laughs> ability. Okay. I will say I've never run a poll before, so hopefully this works. Let's give it a go. Did that work? No? Oh, okay. So, oh, launch poll. That would be a good place to start. Um, so has that popped up for folks? Yes. Great. So the question is, how ready do you feel to speak out uh, among your colleagues about working for fossil fuel companies? And again, we've done a, a range this time. So one is I'm ready to do it today or you're already doing it. And five is on the other end of the spectrum. So not prepared at all, have no idea how I could start doing this. I'd also really like to know if anyone puts a five, there might be people who feel like I would love to, I want to be a one but you put a five if actually it's not, it's not something which would be welcome or safe to do in your agency or your working life. Great, and a lot of people are weighing in. We're getting huge poll participation, which is not always the case. And I think definitely shows that people are really fired up about this one. <laughs> Um, and, and I just want to double underline that there's really no wrong answer to this. You know, I think this is the clean creatives in particular, you know, uh, we're a new project. Um, we really are trying to figure out the best ways to support people um, and knowing where people are at is uh, kind of the first way to do that. So, um, you know, you can't do good unless you're being forthright, I think, in your answers here. Um, so this is this is a little more organized than our um, poll in the chat. So thank you, Hannah. Um, the so we got most almost eighty percent of people who have weighed in. Um, a lot of ones in this group, which is great to hear. Um, and I think there's a lot of people who, if you are feeling ready, um, we want to give you some of the tools um, that we have um, as clean creatives. Um, so one thing that we're going to be releasing later this week is we're going to have a clean creative certified badge that you can include on social media, your website. Um, that you can post, use, deploy, however you'd like. Um, and that's gonna be ready in vector format um, very soon. Um, so that's one thing that's gonna be coming out. Um, and then, you know, the, the two is like, okay, we're getting there. Like maybe we need to like to show, I, you know, I think we're gonna talk in a minute about what, what we need to sort of get all the way to a one. Um, and I think we're really in particular interested in hearing um, from you about what the barriers are to participation and kind of like what would be helpful to Kind of bring you over into the one. 
Um, and then three, you know, maybe we're at, maybe it's just sort of like, we need to talk about the values of the industry. Um, I just want to emphasize that everybody at every part of the spectrum has a lot to offer um, in terms of this conversation, um, which is where we're hoping to go next. Um, so the thing that we had before um, was we were going to do post-it notes. Um, and I'm just going to go back to screen sharing for a moment. Um, So um, this is the question that we were gonna ask next, which is um, what are the biggest barriers to change um, in the ad and PR industry? Um, and so if you were able to get in there and grab a post-it note, um, feel free to leave your notes there. Um, but um, I think actually sketch that. Let's just do this in the chat. <laughs> we're not even gonna mess with this uh, spreadsheet or with this anymore. Um, what are the things that you think are standing in the way of being able to bring more people to that one um, to really create the culture shift within the industry. Um, and I think the more that you can be specific about this, I think the better. Um, is it, you know, are you worried about losing your job? Are you worried about um, whether your agency could survive? Are you worried about clients retaliating to you? Um, are, you know, is there a conversation that would be started in an unkind way on fishbowl or something like that. You know, um, the more specific, I think, the better um, in terms of being able to identify what are the things that are holding people back. Money seems to be a huge, huge barrier that a lot of people are are listing. Um, greed, not understanding the implications of their actions. Tradition. Yeah, that that zeitgeist, the status quo, kind of keeping to where where things are. Fear of change. I think it's really interesting. We've got survival mentality. Mm. Like we're in the global pandemic, the advertising industry has had a really difficult time. Um, there's a lot of folks on here who might currently be furloughed. That kind of situation. So is that going to make this conversation harder? Uh, I see lack of unified front mm -hmm. on the sense that like, you know, they'll just go to, if you turn down a client, they'll go elsewhere. Uh, the sense of climate is a Debbie Downer theme. Um, we can't survive, the idea that we can't survive without fossil fuels, that's, that's one that I'm familiar with. <laughs> when I talk to other agencies who don't want to do their client disclosure report, they don't want to share, um, that's the greatest fear that comes behind all the excuses. Of course, there's a lot of excuses, but then I'm very familiar to all the excuses that you get in this area. But I think the absolute core is we, we, our industry is reliant on it because every industry that is under great pressure, every industry that has got a lot of question marks over it, every industry which has got regulators looking at it, that have got policymakers looking at it. That's the industry that's gonna spend and spend hard on changing public opinion, on influencing consumers and influencing voters. Let's be fair, most ad campaigns for the oil industry are not trying to get you to go to one service station rather than another service station. You know, they're not tra traditional advertising campaigns. They're primarily PR in the wearing the clothes of advertising. And of course they're heavy, heavy, heavy spenders because they're fighting for their survival. So it's a, it's a challenging business model for an agency to step out of. There's been a couple of interesting comments about um, the chance to work within a brand and to, to steer it um, and to see if there's a positive impact um, to be had. Um, the focus on creativity as the highest goal rather than impact. Um, so just kind of having that, that distance it's really interesting. Yeah, I see a few in there about not quite knowing how to talk about it. So not having the, the tools or the language yet to know um, how to bring it up. Um, if we are talking about the solutions, how do we do it in a way that we don't sound worthy and it's not about sacrifice? Um, how do we make it the better, the better option? Um, yeah, great. Okay, should we go on to our, our next question? There's so much good stuff in here. Quick, quick question for me. We're saving all of this and we're going to share it with folks, yeah? Yes, I have figured out how to save Zoom chats. <laughs> Jobbing. 
Yes, carefully monitored, but in a good way. Um, so the next question is um, positive. So we're gonna just do a few minutes on this. So like what's already happening to shift the culture and practices within the PR industry? What are people do? What are you seeing that people are doing that's actually making an impact now? I know some folks have already shared shared some of their initiatives further up, but please do reshare here. This is such an opportunity mm -hmm. to gather the change solutions that folks are doing. Someone asked, "Can you repeat the question?" Yes. Um, what What's already happening to shift the culture and practices within the advertising and PR industry? What projects are already underway? Um, what are you seeing in terms of culture shift um, that is having an impact? Great. Social pressure, purpose is becoming profitable. Um, great to see the purpose disruptors work up there, the great reset. Yeah. The courage of a new generation of creatives. Yes, yeah, small brands held, held by truly passionate founders. Really, really rapid shift in the um, debate around climate change based on climate disasters. That's happening in a lot of places. So there is a big, so we're seeing like there's a combination of things within the industry and then outside the industry, kind of a culture shift coming from outside. Um, a, f a great friend, um, Alice Stedland, um, shared online a translation of the recent conclusions from the French Citizens' Assembly. Uh, many countries are holding Citizens' Assembly, and the number one conclusion from the French Citizens' Assembly was a proposal to for the French government to institute a law prohibiting advertising for oil and gas. So that's literally just come out today. So thank you, Alice, for sharing that. Yeah, regulation. Thank you, France. <laughs> There's a lot of interesting conversation about like what's happening, like uh, the transparency from Fishbowl and apps where, where there's sort of a space, safe space to, to provide transparency. Yeah. Um, e Corps on the rise. On great online communities, yes. So I'm, I'm gonna, just for the sake of time, I'm gonna sort of shift this now into something that I think um, people are getting at already, um, which is what do you think you or your colleagues need in order to speak out more about responding to fossil fuel um, contracts? Um, so this is the question I have. And this is like, again, as specific as you can be. Is there a guide? Is there a resource? Do we need more webinars? Do we need, um, do we need to also clone solely? Like, you know, as, as specific as we can um, on like what would help bring more people into um, being vocal about this? I love a, a solely like bat signal. <laughs> yes, love, oh. just love climate designers, great community. Hi, Mark. Riley and Cole, simple maths. Super simple math. Mm. I think, again, that work of being able to calculate the impact of, an, of a single ad campaign. If it sold more cars, you know, it might be creative, it might be effective, but is it, should we be judging it on its negative impact? PDF for bosses. Credentials. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, didn't mean to step on you there. I'm just, I just want to read out everything that everyone's saying. Yeah. It's so good, it's so useful. Tools to build, to build a business case is a great one, given that we saw money was quite a big barrier for, for a lot of folks. I would like to see our uh, climate disclosure reports becoming EU regulation. Not yeah. a few things. <laughs> Oh, Ollie, love that point. Need to leverage the recruitment industry to make it a standard question on job descriptions. Yeah, yeah lots of awards, promotion of top 100 green ad companies. I think we talk about this a lot at, at Futera. How do we make it um, kind of a, a status symbol? How do we make it this is the thing that everyone's striving for? 
Yep, content on the drum, on Forbes. Miss Spit, these answers are brilliant because it speaks to one of my concerns, which is the ad industry is using their focus on the direct footprint. And great, everyone needs to deal with the direct footprint. I need to deal with my direct footprint. Every organization needs to deal with its direct footprint. But this is 2021. You should not be, be winning plaudits for changing your recycling policies or switching to a green energy supplier if you're an ad agency. The material impact of the advertising industry is the clients it serves, not, well, bluntly, the, the direct footprint of a large ad agency is smaller than your average kindergarten. Like, they, these are not heavy industry. They're heavy impact, completely different. So what I love about these ideas is that they are really pushing against the, we've got to put our own house in order first. It's like, no, 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 I don't care about your house. I care about the client's houses that you're serving because that's where the real impact is. This is brilliant. Oh, don't economics have made it in. Thank you, whoever waved that. <laughs> Lots of good stuff in here. Donut, yes. Um, so, because uh, we have a few more minutes, I, I just want to offer, um, I think people should continue um, with their uh, comments here in the chat, which are all fantastic. But I want you to zoom the screen share again. Um, you don't have to dig into the um, slides this time, but just to talk a little bit more about what Clean Creatives is doing, because I think it actually speaks to some of this about providing more and better information to being the, the Green Creatives Union, um, as someone mentioned. Um, so. Clean Creatives, to put it briefly, um, is our job is to connect agencies, clients, and individual creatives who want to end the PR and ad industry's collaboration with fossil fuels to shift the culture of their companies and industry. So we want to actually bring together people who want to be vocal about this, who want to see the industry and your companies um, stop working with fossil fuel companies, which are the people leading the charge and responsible for the way of the destruction that we're seeing across the planet. Um, we started out by doing some research just to kick us off at the end of last year, and I wanted to share just a, a snippet of that. Um, this is um, based on public disclosures of like where um, the fossil fuel industry um, uh, is spending its money. Um, and so trade associations in the United States have to disclose how much they're spending on advertising. Um, and we did a breakdown of what they've spent over the past five years. and. Um, I think sometimes in the, in the context of this industry, there's a, the idea it's like, okay, fossil fuel companies, they deserve to have their argument made in the public sphere. We need to have a balanced conversation. Environmental campaigners like Bill are just so good at their jobs. We have to represent um, big oil. And the reality is, is that it's not a balanced conversation that 99.8% um, of the money that's being spent on trade, by trade associations and the energy sphere comes from fossil fuels. It's almost all advocating for continued ad, continue burning and use of fossil fuels. Renewable trade associations fossil, and like climate campaigners just cannot keep up with this flood of money. So it really is an unbalanced conversation at the moment. And that balance looks like stepping away from the fossil fuel engagement. Um, some of the other research we did um, is we started to build a map of who's, who, who's working with who. Um, and this is based on very cursory um, as you know, as, as Soli and Hannah pointed out, um, not a lot of transparency right now, but we do know some things about who's working with who. Um, we started to build a map of um, where, these, so where these connections are being, um, where these connections are. Uh, you can see also the big parent companies, sort of how they fit in, um, independent companies, where they're doing their work. Um, and so this is just based on some of those um, disclosures that come through, you know, U.S. reporting. Um, and also trade or trade journals, uh, mentions, iSpot, things like that. Um, and this is all available at cleancreatives.org slash learn. We have a whole breakdown of this. Um, and so what we're asking people to do is to take this pledge with us, um, which is as agencies, strategists, and creatives to decline future contracts with fossil fuel companies, trade associations, or front groups. Um, and the reason that we're asking people to make this pledge is because of a lot of the things that was being mentioned in the chat. Um, is that we need to create a real industry norm, um, that this is the right way to work. Um, and in order to do that, um, we need people to put their hand up, um, to say, to be visible and vocal uh, and to make this pledge and to be public about it. 
And that that's the way you begin to shift the culture and to work on some of the things that um, people mentioned about this, the expectation that, oh, we just always need fossil fuels. This is the only way to make money. Um, the more people who stand up and say this, um, the more that we can sort of make the case that the fossil fuel industry's hold on the advertising and PR industry is, um, it's not inevitable. It's something that we can shake. Um, so really individual voices make a huge difference here. I will also say um, that as clean creatives, we are gonna be working on pressuring clients um, to make a similar pledge to say that they're not gonna work with agencies that work with fossil fuels um, in order to create some like positive space for people to step into and just recognize that there's a lot of work to be done um, with companies that aren't interested in financing destruction, that aren't interested in burning more fossil fuels. Um, and so I'm gonna hand it back to Hannah to talk uh, more about Futera's work. Great, thank you. Um, so if you are in that slide deck, um, what we uh, are putting forward as, as our solution is, is these disclosure reports. Um, so we do wanna invite all of you to, um, to explore it, see if that's something that makes sense for, for you to do. Um, and please do get in touch if you have questions about it. Oh, thanks, Duncan. Um, so you can find out more about the work that we're doing with disclosure reports on this website, creativeandclimate.com. Um, and Duncan, if you can just go to the um, next slide, please. I'm just giving um, an example of what Futera has done for our disclosure report. And if you do go on the site, you can find a wide range of examples of, of how different agencies have done them because, um, you know, this, the way that we've done it isn't the only way, but just as an example, the things that, that we've put in ours, one is our, our climate conflict. So what we did was identify um, high carbon industries and we've disclosed work that we have done with them as well as provide more context around what that work was. So we haven't worked on any fossil fuel, fossil fuel brief. So we've described what the brief actually was if we worked with that client. Um, the other thing that we've done is done a whole breakdown of our business revenue by sector. So we've looked at, okay, here's who's paying our bills. Here's where our creativity is going. Um, and it, this is also just a, a really helpful um, thing, thing to do. Um, so that's what we've done to, to be transparent about where um, we've lent our creative uh, energy. Um, and if you could go to the next slide, um, what we've done as well is given a breakdown of who are our top 10 um, largest clients by income. So we haven't uh, named our clients, so we haven't broken any confidentiality agreements that we have with them. Um, but we have I've just given a descriptor of the biggest projects that we've worked on um, just to, again, be transparent about where we're lending our, our creative energy um, and powers to. So again, if you uh, visit the website or I can also um, share some more links, you can check out ours if you want to get some inspiration of, of what you could do for a disclosure report. Um, and just, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll hand it back to you, Duncan, to talk about, okay, for this, this community here today, what our, our asks are. Oh, you're on mute, Duncan. Found the button. Great. Three nice. communities, uh, three, three requests. One um, is to take the Clean Creatives Pledge. Um, this is at cleancreatives.org um, and to be a part of this community with us. Um, we're going to have more resources, including that really snazzy badge um, made available very soon. Um, and we're, we'll be sharing out the recording. Um, and we really look at this as the beginning, the starting point of a really powerful year of change. Um, so we'd like you to step up and join with us. So cleancreatives.org clean, clean, clean um, is the place to go. Um, second is to help your agency move towards transparency. Um, so Hannah showed a little bit of what um, Futera has done, um, but you can also look at, there's a template available for you. Yes, um, so we want to make it as easy as possible. Um, so we've just created an outline of how we've broken down what, what we've done. So um, it's an interactive PDF that you can go download. You can input your numbers, um, figure out what your percentages are, um, and you can save that. And if you do create a disclosure report, we'd love to help um, push it out on, on our website. So please do get in touch with me and we can um, help boost that and, and put that live. Um, so you can join kind of this community and network of, of agencies who are committed to transparency um, through client uh, disclosures. So um, yeah, that's that's um, how we would love for you to get involved as well. So if you have your own agency, would love for you to do that. Um, if you work at an agency, um, 
bring it up, see if, if this is something that um, your leadership might be interested in doing. You could also do it as a freelancer. Um, but yeah, we're, we're doing a big push uh, for transparency this year. So would love, um, yeah, to make it the standard, to make it the norm in the creative industries. Uh, which brings to us our last um, ask, which is to share that you were here today. Um, you know, talking about this is a virtuous cycle. Um, and the more you say, the more other people are willing to step up and the more they step up, the more they can mobilize their friends. And um, that's ultimately what's gonna make the difference um, is just to continue making noise um, and being specific about how, where you're at. Um, if you're a one, if you're a three, um, if you're a two, however you are, um, you know, even being honest about like what may be holding you back um, is part of really um, pushing this conversation forward. So I would say, even if you're not at that one, um, just share that you were here today, that you're thinking about it, that you were, you know, you thought it was important enough to take an hour out of your Tuesday um, to think about and to talk about. So that's really valuable. Um, and, you know, if you're worried about your work or you're worried about where this is headed, just be frank about where you're at. And that's, that's still important. That's still necessary. So um, that's what we have. Um, that is our hour and a little bit of change. Um, yes. uh, Hannah. Thank you all so much. And thank you, Duncan. Thank you, Solly. Thank you, Bill, for joining us. Thank you, everyone who joined today. It was so amazing to have this conversation. Thank you for being patient with us as we, you know, deal with technology. Um, but we had such a rich chat chat in the chat. Um, so thanks, everyone, for your ideas and contributions. We will definitely be back in touch to keep this community alive to help build and grow this movement. Um, so thank you again. And we will be in touch soon. Bye, everyone. Bye, all.